So in a normal physics problem, we would usually begin by defining a sign convention for a y-axis and an x-axis like so. And this is sort of what we expect of our axes. But in problems that involve inclined planes, it's actually more convenient to tilt our axes like so, so that we have an x-axis that is parallel to the surface of the incline and a y-axis that is perpendicular to it like so. And what this basically forces us to do is it forces us to create components of gravity because gravity is going to continue to just act straight downwards. It's not going to tilt for us with our axis. So what we need to do is we need to set up a y component of gravity that aligns with our tilted y axis and an x component of gravity that aligns with our tilted x axis. Now, typically the sign convention or just the sort of trigonometric convention that we would use for setting up components is we might expect cos theta to be used for the x component and sine theta to be used for the y component. This is what you usually see in things like kinematics, but in the situation of an inclined plane, this gets confusing because these are actually reversed. We use cos theta to define the y component and we use sine theta to define the x component of gravity. So if this angle right here is theta, and we know that this angle right here is 90 degrees, we can conclude that theta plus whatever this angle is up here need to add up to 90. So we can say that this angle is 90 minus theta. And this is based on the fact that the internal angles of this triangle need to add up to 180 degrees total. So if this angle is theta, and we were to draw this triangle right over here, that's sort of got a side that's sitting at 90 degrees right here, we can conclude that this angle right here has to be theta. And if we take a look at the sides of this triangle, we can see that this side right here lines up with our y component of gravity, and this side right here lines up with our x component of gravity. Additionally, we can see that this straight line right here lines up with our overall component of gravity. So we can use this to create an expression for the trig, uh, the, the trig equations that we will use for the x and y components of gravity. So this side right here will represent our y component, and this side right here will represent our x component. So if we look at theta right here, we can say that cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So we can say that cos theta equals the y component of gravity divided by our overall gravity. And if we rearrange this equation, we get that fg cos theta is equal to the y component of gravity. Similarly, we can do something like that with sine. So we know that sine theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And again, this right here is our hypotenuse. So we can say that sine theta is equal to the x component of gravity divided by fg. And rearranging that, we can say that fg sine theta is equal to the x component of gravity. Now, if we break down fg, we will see that fg equals mg. And so we're left with two expressions, mg sine theta equals the x component of gravity and mg cos theta equals the y component of gravity. And this is also how we might often derive an expression for the normal force in these kinds of situations. So maybe normally on a flat surface, you'll have the force of gravity acting as mg, and opposite to that, you'll have the normal force, which you can say, since it's not accelerating in the y direction, we can say fn equals fg equals mg. So it's a very similar thing in this scenario, except fn, our normal force here, is actually opposite to the y component of our gravity, not our overall gravity. So in this kind of situation, we can say that Fn, as long as we're not accelerating in the y direction for our tilted y axis, 
we can say that Fn has to be equal to the y component of gravity. So we might often say that Fn equals mg cos theta coming from here. And this is also what we might often see in an expression for friction because the force of friction is equal to mu Fn. So in this case, it's equal to mu mg cos theta.